This is DW News coming to you live from Berlin. Deadly violence on Capitol Hill. An angry mob of Trump supporters storms the building. Rioters break into the chamber where lawmakers were meeting to certify Joe Biden's election victory. Outside, police fire tear gas to try to disperse the rioters. Hello, I'm Terry Martin. Good to have you with us. We begin with unprecedented and deadly scenes at the Capitol in Washington, D.C., where supporters of President Donald Trump stormed the building in a bid to overturn the election results. One woman was shot and later died of her injuries as rioters attempted to stop Congress members from certifying Joe Biden's election victory. We'll be going live to Washington in, for an update in just a moment, but first, a look at how the dramatic scenes unfolded. Chaos unraveled at Capitol Hill as the building was stormed by hundreds of Trump supporters. A battle ensued between riot police and the protesters as they broke past security. They stormed the Senate chambers to prevent Congress from certifying Joe Biden's election victory, literally bringing democracy to a halt. Trump released a recorded message telling his supporters to go home, but failed to condemn their actions. We have to have peace. So go home. We love you. You're very special. You've seen what happens. The violence was branded as a siege by President-elect Joe Biden, who warned of the threat to democracy. To storm the Capitol, to smash windows, to occupy offices, the floor of the United States Senate rummaging through desks on the Capitol, on the House of Representatives, threatening the safety of duly elected officials. It's not protest, it's insurrection. You gotta end okay. on the, the crowds dissipated once the 6 p.m. curfew came into force, but National Guard troops remained alert for potential violence throughout the night. Our Washington correspondent Carolina, Carolina Chimoy has been following all of this. Carolina, an extraordinary day on Capitol Hill. We know that one person was shot and killed. What more can you tell us? Well, right now, um, the Capitol Hill has been uh, secured. The police is there, but Washington is actually very quiet right now. Um, there are a few policemen outside, and they just want to make sure that no one is uh, really breaking this curfew. Um, essential workers, including health care personnel and media, are exempt from this curfew. And um, on the political side, that is important to say, the Congress restarted the electoral count that was interrupted after uh, Trump supporters stormed the halls of the Congress. Uh, but uh, both leaders, um, the Democrat Nancy Pelosi and uh, the Republican Mitch McConnell, they both uh, have said that they want to end the, the count of the electoral votes tonight. And with that, they want to certify the winner of the presidential election uh, of November 3rd once and for all. Stay with us, Carolina. The uh, confirmation session in Congress resumed after the building was cleared of the rioters. Here's what the Senate Majority Leader, Republican Mitch McConnell, said when the chamber reconvened. The United States Senate will not be intimidated. We will not be kept out of this chamber by thugs, mobs, or threats. We will not bow to lawlessness or intimidation. We are back at our posts. We will discharge our duty under the Constitution and for our nation. And we're going to do it tonight. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell speaking there. Well, Carolina, what impact has the violence had on the proceedings there on Capitol Hill? 
It was definitely a kind of wake-up call for most of the lawmakers who are now defending the democracy, even uh, some of the Republican senators who are planning to um, object the electoral votes um, of several uh, swing states that voted for um, Democrat Joe Biden. They have rejected their objection, uh, like, for example, even uh, the Republican candidate uh, for the Senate from Georgia, Ms. Loeffler. Um, but there are still some senators who are willing to maintain the objections uh, besides uh, the mob on the Congress we saw some uh, hours ago. Uh, this is why the procedure has just been interrupted again. The Senate and the House are right now debating and voting on the votes from Pennsylvania. And this can take a couple of hours uh, since each senator and um, each uh, representative um, of the House is allowed to talk for mm. five minutes. Now, police forces on Capitol Hill were quickly overwhelmed by the rioters. Why was security not tighter, given that large numbers of angry Trump supporters were expected? Well, um, the policemen and the secure forces, they definitely, they did not anticipate the size of this march. And we have to say there have been several marches of Trump supporters during the past weeks and even the past months. Um, even uh, before the election day, before November 3rd, there were a lot of Trump supporters here in the city. But there was not, not this, this, this atmosphere. They were not that angry as they were today. They were not that aggressive. And that made a huge difference. But I think no no one was really accounting with, with such a mob, with uh, such a picture that we saw some hours ago. Carolina, thank you very much. Uh, that was our Washington correspondent, Carolina Chamoy, there. Now, let's bring in Peter Matthews. He's a professor of political science at Cypress College and joins us from Los Angeles. Professor Matthews, what do you make of the assault by violent Trump supporters on Capitol Hill? It was horrendous, um, constitutionally and in terms of human terms as well, because this was not a riot. This was an insurrection. It was an attempt, and actually they stopped the procedure of a presidential president-elect getting actually confirmed. They were blocking a government from being able to take its position, the legitimate government, that's Joe Biden's uh, administration, by not allowing it to be certified. This was a physical act of violence to stop the government from working. It's insurrection. It has to be dealt with very firmly so people will get the message that this cannot be tolerated in a democracy. That's what I look at. You, it. you mentioned uh, it's insurrection. The president-elect Joe Biden described it as bordering on sedition. How much responsibility do you think President Donald Trump himself bears for what happened? Tremendous responsibility. He's been um, provoking these people, inciting them. That's the correct word, incitement to violence with his words, with his actions. He, in fact, addressed this crowd, I think, today at noon, before they started the, the insurrection. He was addressing them, I believe, at noon. And besides that, he's been talking to them throughout the last few weeks and saying that the election was stolen. He was making up lies about it and getting them to believe it and repeating it often enough. We know from fascism and other Nazism that when a big lie is repeated over and over again, people come to believe it. And these folks worship him like a, like a cult. And so that's a real big problem for democracy. And he has a big responsibility here as having to incite this riot, this riot or this insurrection. And I believe that it, it's, it's too late right now. There's got to be something to be done about him. He's got two more weeks left, and many people are concerned about what he might do during the last two weeks of his uh, presidency. President Trump has had his accounts on Twitter and Facebook uh, stopped because of him continuing to say that there has been widespread voter uh, fraud when that is completely unsubstantiated. Do you think there's a legal case for removing President Trump from office before his term ends? There certainly is. I know it's a very short time, but there are two methods that could be done. This the impeachment method, which was already tried before. He wasn't. He was impeached, but not removed. This time, if it were done quickly, it could be done, and I think maybe the Senate might vote for it, but that's probably not likely. But the other way is the 25th Amendment, where the vice president gets together with the cabinet, and a majority of the cabinet votes to re to say that the president is incapacitated. He cannot carry out his duties. And if they do that, then he has to step down and let the vice president take over. If he uh, actually rejects that and, and protests it and wants to stay in power, then it goes to the House and Senate. They have to vote by two-thirds majority to remove him. So it's a bit of a complicated process, process, but there's some real talk among significant leaders now in Congress and also in the, the, the country itself about him having to be having the 25th Amendment used to remove him. 
Hmm. Uh, and it's, it's quite uh, remarkable that, that we've come to that point right now. Okay, we might have lost your audio. Um, tell us if you can hear me, how do you explain the persistent belief among Republican voters that the election has been stolen from them? Well, first of all, many of those voters are just not uh, well read about this issue. Or they don't have the details of how the Electoral College works and where it went and the appeals that Trump made. All they do is they watch him, they listen to him, and they follow him, you know, because of his charisma for them. He's able to manipulate them into believing that he's telling the truth and that the media and all the other mainstream people and institutional people are lying. And so when this is the, in their belief system, that's why they follow him blindly. And it's a very dangerous thing. He got 74 million votes. Joe Biden got 80 million or so, but still he got 74 million. And a big percent of those people are very gung-ho. And there's an element of racism also involved there. And he uses that to divide and conquer, to separate the, in quote, true Americans, which he says that they are, uh, from the other Americans who are all the other people in America are coming together of all ethnicities to unite and have a rule of law principle. So you have a whole different vision of America than the rest of us do quite often. Professor Matthews, thank you very much for your insights. That was uh, Peter Matthews. He's a professor of political science at Cypress College in, in Los Angeles. Thank you very much. Thank you.